Good evening, you're very welcome to tonight's Daily Rundown with me, Fiona Fox. Now, this is the show where we look at some of the big days, or the day's big talking points even, and some little bits you may have missed as well. Things up for debate on this Daily Rundown include the new illegal highs, your passwords, camera surveillance, and the taxman's bad customer service. Plus, we'll be talking about foster care awareness fortnight later in the show. But first, it's time to introduce the guest who'll help you wade through it all this evening. It's one half of Mac and the Medic, Richard Bircher is here. Hello. Hi, Richard. Thank you for having me back. You're very, very welcome. After last time as well, it was touch and go, wasn't it? But it was a bit, yes. Give you, give like you another chance. Thank so, you very much. Thanks for coming and, and the other half's here as well. The other half as well. Is the better half, some the, might say? Well, might say, some yes. Some might say. The, the half that can sing in tune. Penny. McDonald. <laughs> Hi, Penny. Hi, how are you feeling? Again, thanks for coming in with this one. You're very, very yeah. good sharing the couch. And that's right, I've picked on you straight away. Oh, come I just on, got all my life, in. people start to pick on me. Straight in there, haven't I, yeah, Richard? I think you need to look at that, actually. I think because people suggest I'm so robust. They can see it in my face. <laughs> so he's one they can take the mickey out of. But really, on the inside. I'm sensitive. <laughs> I cry at movies. Yeah. Thanks for being here, guys. Looking, by, looking forward to uh, your something to say as ever later on. Uh, now, if you guys at home want to get involved with the show, have your say on anything that we're chatting about this evening, give us a tweet at the Daily Rundown. You can follow us while you're at it. Uh, otherwise, we'd be a bit of a wasted journey swinging by our Twitter, wouldn't it? Now, time to dissect what her most excellent, what in the name of goodness is this? They try to put booby traps in here for me all the time. Any little. <laughs> uh, right, we're going to go into our first story. The UK spending on foreign aid grows faster than the rest of the world. That's according to critics. We're the only nation in the G7 group who met the target to spend 0.7% of our budget on foreign aid, whilst Germany, the United States and Canada's spending on aid fell. Um, one Tory backbencher, Philip Davies, uh, it led him to call the UK the mug of the world. Other Tory MPs defended the spending, saying we are setting a positive example for other nations. So what do we think about it here? Are we, are we generous? Are we, is this happy news? Or are you worried that, you know, we're overspending or we're putting our, our, our budget I, in the wrong direction? I think it's fantastic You're news. You're happy? Yeah, very much so. Are you surprised that we're ahead? Uh, well, I think because of austerity and cutbacks, yes, I think it is. Especially when there's so many things happening on our domestic soil as well. Yeah. Mm. But but most aid money, foreign aid money, gets spent on things like stopping kids getting malaria and treating nasty diseases and immunising people and putting children through primary school. Yeah. And those wonderful things and supporting things like United Nations. So I feel very proud. You're happy because yes. obviously you've kind of. I was going to say what well, a rebuttal to that might be if somebody was anti. You've kind of covered it yourself already, haven't you? There is a lot going on on UK soil. Um, cutbacks. Absolutely. In every kind of area, really. So I can understand why Philip Davis, the MP, is saying we're the mugs. Are we mugs, though? Or? Um, well, I suppose I, I, I'm not clever enough to decide if that's the best way of spending the public purse, because other people more clever than me might know that sort of thing. But surely enough, there's, there's, if you make friends abroad and you have influence there, then there's going to be something to, mm. to reap later on in life. Right, so basically it's yes, kind of a, so. a, agenda, a, good, a good agenda there, yes. so a clever kind of move. What do you think, Penny? Yeah, I, I agree. I know it, it's a tricky one because what you see uh, when you walk down any street is homeless people sitting in the rain and you think, where's the help for them? Yeah. But it doesn't mean that one shouldn't also help people, in, particularly in third world countries, who've got absolutely nothing. Because often people will say charity should begin at home and they often mean by that and end at home. Uh, I think... Just box it off like that. Yeah, yeah. and I think there's enough... Them. I think it's fabulous that we are fulfilling the promise of the amount that we should give and it's a bit shocking that none of the other countries are fulfilling that promise is, is that what you that's what you kind of see highlighted in the whole article more mm. than the rest of it is it that yeah. the other that the other countries are falling short yeah. rather of I their think, promises as well i think germany's up there isn't it i think germany's number two for head of population how much they give yes yes but, but still after us though you're still after us yes exactly i don't kind of expect germany to be ahead of everything no exactly <laughs> <laughs> and and it's, it's, only, all lists. it's only 13 billion Oh, yeah, it's only, it's well, only that, Richard. Spend that on a manicure. I, I looked it up. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I looked it up before I came here. Last year, the, the British public donated to different charities about 10 billion anyway. Goodness, wow. So we're really generous. We so, gave 10 billion away to charities and 13 billion on foreign aid. So aside from that kind of um, a, a long-term agenda, do you think that maybe it's just a cultural thing? This is just it's in our nature? Are we just like mm. this? Are we just the big-hearted UK? Well, we hope so, yes. Yeah. We want to be seen like that? 
Well, I'd like to be seen like that. I get, well, absolutely. Yeah. No, because I, I don't know how it works, you see. So the public donate this amount of money, but then it goes through some government organisation. Who, who is the one deciding how much goes? Oh, the foreign aid comes from taxes. Yeah, okay. And then the other 10 billion is just donated to different to, charities. To charities. Yeah, okay, to. so. Right, so the foreign aid comes from taxes. So That's whoever right. decides where those taxes go is. is the government. The big hearted. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but there'll be some politics in there. Oh, there'll, oh, there'll be, be some politics, politics. <laughs> yeah, there'll be some. Oh, say. some countries get it, some countries it don't. Seem, sure. Do you know what I seem surprised on the back of the um, Syrian refugee crisis last mm. year? There was some kind of. There was some quite negative press and some kind of negative responses from yeah. the public um, when we, you know, with the various different ways we pledged to look after them and that and the kind Absolutely, of Absolutely, yes. So it is kind of a surprise. I found it a bit of a surprise, like, in a good way. Hmm. I guess that's what I mean. Given that that, that one was if so close the public, as well. So, so it's the tax. We pay tax because we have to, because we should, and we do. And somebody decides that amount of tax will go to foreign aid. Whereas if you were to ask the public, <laughs> whoever they are, I wonder if they would say, yeah, that's, that amount of tax should go to foreign aid, or if they would say, what about our hospitals, what about well, our schools, this is what about... Mm. Pro possibly, um, what would happen here, yeah, I mean, it's a good question. Isn't we it? could ask, that'd be another referendum. Oh, no, oh, not referendum. another one. Yeah. Well, another obviously, one of them. So anybody, <laughs> anyone has an opinion of it, obviously should tweet in what they think, but um, how do you feel about the Tory MP saying, Call, you know, kind of uh, speaking out and saying he feels like we're the mug. By, how, do you, how do you feel about He's obviously a northerner. So <laughs> calling us mugs. <laughs> yes. You're daft, David. Well, um, I, I, his, his, his point of view is that we're giving money to corrupt um, organisations or corrupt governments. Yeah. But in fact, most foreign aid actually goes for uh, well-recognised well um, schemes to kind of treat children or yeah. put children through primary schools. Uh, it's, going, it's going to um, United Nations and, and, and relief, debt relief and things like yeah. that. So, yeah, it's really important stuff. And I don't, I don't, yeah. think, it, I don't think a lot of it does sink into government hands, which are a bit dodgy. Yeah, would you be confident that people would know that, though? Or would you feel a comment like this would be a dangerous thing? The public might, there might be a oh, yeah. certain, certain newspaper headline tomorrow. Or you know what I mean? Like, with, yes, you know, we're this mugs. Is what, this is what the public, Look, exactly, yeah, exactly. Is what and mm -hmm. I don't like that, that attitude. Kind of because I think we should, I think it's one world and we should all be helping each other. And it's a little miss idealist, I know, but I genuinely do. Yeah. So, oh, we're mugs because yeah. we're helping them and they're not helping them. And it's horribly yeah. divisive. It's like a, like a Roger Hargreaves novel, isn't it? And little, little miss idealistic. <laughs> and obviously, you know, you don't know what way, like, as you said, you don't know what's going to happen down the line if you're going to rely on other countries. Support. Absolutely. It's nice to have mm. One day we might be in crisis. Maybe we, we might be. say, damn it, we need to go to Chad to. Yeah. For aid. Although you, you don't give to get, do you? But <laughs> no, no, you don't. <laughs> but you really is ideal, uh, right, idealistic. Wow, that's uh, you really, really are. <laughs> yeah, I am. Cheers. Thanks very much for that one, guys. Let's move to our next one. Uh, research has suggested that young people who take legal highs intend to ignore the incoming ban on the substances. Our reporter Hannah Persilly went to speak to Superintendent Alistair Mallon from Greater <coughs> Manchester Police. It's the Psychoactive Substances Act that comes into force tonight uh, and basically it will be a criminal offence to supply uh, any of these legal highs uh, to anybody else and that includes buying it for your friend and handing it over. What I can tell you is uh, since Friday, so over the last five days, we've had nine people who have collapsed and been ill as a result of uh, taking legal highs, which is really alarming for us. This stuff will kill you full stop. Look what, it's, look, look what it's done to nine people in five days across Rochdale. Do not take it. Even the labelling on the packets tells you it's harmful, it's dangerous, it's poison. And if you take it, contact the emergency services. The, the bottom line, do not take it. Uh, right, thank that's for that. So um, the legal highs, I don't know, what do you think about this? Because they've kind of been in the news quite often recently. And um, I think just in the news the last week, Rochdale have dealt with, I think, nine mm. collapses, mm -hmm. um, all based around legal highs. Well, what's your, obviously, I know I always refer back to until you're the GP on the couch. Yeah, what's, what's your on the feeling couch. on us? Doctor Gosh, the I've, that's I've, a I've spin off that. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I've got, yeah, that's, I could yeah. do a series, couldn't yeah, I? Yeah, from the couch, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you know what? I'm in two minds about it. Because when you look through history, we just spent millenniums getting off our faces. Yes. Yeah. I agree. We, have, we, we used to pick berries and take <laughs> them and grind yeah. things up and smoke them. And, and we've, we've had a kind of innate ability to um, 
just to make the world seem very different mm. by getting high. Animals do it too. And then unfortunately we're surrounded by vast amounts of technology and information technology so people can find out about things and lots of chemicals now. So people grind up and smoke or use lots of things. So when you look at all the lists, I, I, I went on the Frank website before I came oh, on. Ask you know, Frank. Ask Frank, yeah. And I looked up uh, legal highs and literally there were a, about two dozen pages just of names of all the different legal highs. And, and the oh. chemicals range from um, prescription medications to plants you grind up to chemicals you get for weed killers. And, and I think, oh my God, how do people invent these things? I mean, who actually sits there going, well, weed killers? Let's try some. Are you dizzy yet? Yeah? No, I'm not dizzy. Yeah. Right, no, I'm not <laughs> weed killers and all. Yeah, that's definitely no, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's incredible, right, isn't it? it? But I suppose, but you're right, I guess obviously over the years that's something that people have done all the time, but the legal high thing recently, do you, do you think that it comes with a dangerous um, feeling of false security for kids? Absolutely. Because it's legal. Yeah. Because it's fair. legal. And it's got cute names. They do. They, what was that pink, what? pink, the one that you I know? actually, the only one I saw was this one called Spice. I've, saw, I've seen Spice. that in articles um, on Meow yeah, Meow. Yeah. Yes. Bliss. Yeah. Clockwork Orange. Gosh, they're lovely, aren't they? They're the yeah, ones. They exactly. Like they do. They, they well, Bliss like and from, Clockwork Orange, I think, are quite dangerous. They sound like something from Willy Wonka's uh, Chocolate mm, Factory. Absolutely, Sweet. yes. They're very colourful yes. kind of creative names. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's misleading. Um, but if they said, you know, horse stimulant, you wouldn't buy it, would you? No, no. You, you certainly wouldn't give it to your friends as a laugh, would you? It's just, it's such a weird turn that it kind of took over the last few years though, isn't it? Oh, this, it just kind of came out of nowhere and so yeah. it's like, oh, these ones are fine and maybe it's, maybe it's got to people who like wouldn't or, ordinarily dabble with the actual illegal stuff. Yeah. Um, let's go for a quick break and we'll come back and we'll finish the story okay. in just a second. Uh, this is our first break of the evening. Don't go anywhere. We have lots more news and a very special interview coming up mid-show as well. See you soon. <laughs> 